Hello, I'm John Lee, a professor of social studies education at North Carolina State University. Welcome to module three of our disciplinary literacy series. This one focused on economic literacies. This module on economic literacies is the third of our five part series. We have looked at the general concept of disciplinary literacies in literacies and civics. Now we will examine the, the discipline of economics toward learning more about how literacy in this field contributes to a broad social studies education. Economics is a well-established discipline in social studies that plays a particularly important role in high school, where most students take a course focused on both micro and macro economics, as well as personal finance. The discipline of economics also makes an appearance in elementary school and middle school integrated into social studies courses that students take, hopefully on a yearly basis. The discipline of economics is grounded in the notion that humans must make decisions about how to use and allocate resources that are almost always scarce in supply. In this video, we'll review some of the key literacies or ways of thinking as well as conceptual knowledge in economics that are featured in the C3 framework. We'll also focus on inquiry in the C3 inquiry arc. Here, the discipline of economics has some advantages over other disciplines in social studies, for example, history. While inquiry in history deals largely with documents, and often, difficult to access documents, it can lay a heavy intermediate literacy burden on students, in addition to the requirements of specialized historical thinking. We ask a lot of students when they read text in the field of history. Economics, on the other hand, makes more regular use of database sources such as graphs, the types of materials that students would see on an everyday basis. Now, their interaction with that data may very well be complex and the expectations for that interaction complex, but the source material may very well be more recognizable to students. Economics also calls on students to think in practical ways that informs everyday decisions that we make about how to make use of those resources that are in scarce supply. Economics requires its own unique forms of literacy, and students have to learn those before they can interrogate the sources that make up the field. So we'll be examining those unique ways of thinking, as well as thinking about the conceptual knowledge that informs students' work here. These economic literacies include tools that economists use when thinking in the discipline, as well as the concepts and understandings that establish a foundation for the discipline. These tools, concepts, and foundational understandings can be found in the economic strand of Dimension 2 in the C3 framework. Here you see on the screen the indicators in economics, or summaries of those indicators, explaining the ways of thinking or tools and the conceptual knowledge that lay a foundation for the field. It's important to note that the C3 framework presents economics from the perspective of economic decision-making. And you'll see economic decision-making everywhere in the C3 framework. As you can see in this extended quote from the C3 framework, economic or effective economic decision-making is extremely important. And because it's so important, it actually goes to the heart and soul of economics. I'm going to read this passage as you read along. Effective economic decision-making requires that students have a keen understanding of the ways in which individuals, businesses, governments, and societies make decisions to allocate human capital, physical capital, and natural resources among alternative uses. The economic reasoning process involves the consideration of cost and benefits with the ultimate goal of making decisions that will enable individuals and societies to be as well off as possible. 
The study of economics provides students with the concepts and tools necessary for an economic way of thinking and helps students understand the interactions of buyers and sellers in markets, workings of the national economy, and interactions within the global marketplace. So again, these are the 15 indicators in the civic strand of the C3 framework. Most of these indicators focus on concepts and foundational understandings that support the field. Here you see a summary of the 15 indicator pathways, and note how many of these are focused on conceptual knowledge. I'll just read the first one. Understand how scarcity and cost-benefit analysis impact economic decision-making. Well, there's two very important economics concepts in this summary statement. Scarcity and cost-benefit analysis. And so we need to provide students with opportunities to encounter those con concepts and work with them as they build up their knowledge or their literacy. In this instance, it's unique knowledge about concepts within the field so that they're better able to do inquiry and other uh, uh, approaches to learning in social studies. The second summary indicator, use economic information, including marginal benefits and costs to make decisions. Again, a concept, marginal benefits and costs, but this time you'll note that the focus is more on what students do using economic information. So we'll talk more about some of these tools um, uh, as we go along, but we will again emphasize the concepts um, that are relevant within economics. This is an example of the first indicator, or this is the first indicator in the economic strand of Dimension 2 in the C3 framework. It's the one I read the summary for a minute ago that deals with the concept of scarcity. Um, here we have another example of the way an indicator pathway works. The indicator pathway has four statements. Each statement is written for students in a particular grade band, and the expectation would be that students at the end of that grade band are competent in the thing that is described in that statement. So at the earliest grades, students would be expected to explain how scarcity necessitates decision making. And we want to give students regular practice with being able to do that. In the third through fifth grades, by the end of fifth grade, students would compare benefits and costs as individual short, short, uh, choices. Gets a little bit more complicated in middle school, grades six, eight, students would explain how economic decisions affect the well-being of individuals, business, and society. And then by the time students finish in 12th grade, they would be able to analyze how incentives influence choices that may result in policies with a range of cost and benefits for different groups. Economics offers us a good opportunity to examine what we mean when we say disciplinary literacies. Returning to Shanahan's definition, disciplinary literacy is an emphasis on, dis on knowledge and abilities possessed by those who create, communicate, and use knowledge within the disciplines. Again from Shanahan, he says, disciplinary literacies emphasize the unique tools that experts in the disciplines use to participate in the work of that discipline. So the disciplines include specific concepts that are within the field, as well as specific tools in that field that experts use to create knowledge. This approach to literacy, based on concepts and tools, differs from the generalizable approaches that we call content area literacies. And Shanahan helps us make the distinctions. For example, an emphasis on vocabulary from a content area reading perspective would suggest that students read sources from the content areas and then use general strategies to build up their knowledge of those words. Strategies such as word maps, making connections among words, and semantic analysis of words. Shanahan argues that these are useful, but they do not help students understand the patterns and unique ways in which a discipline uses the words. For example, science makes heavy use of Greek and Latin terms, where social studies in areas such as economics draw on what Shanahan calls openly metaphorical terms. Think about the economic terms scarcity 
in benefits and cost. They are metaphorical in a way, and we could certainly use these words differently in a general sense than economists would use them in their field. And we need to help under students understand those unique disciplinary ways of using these concepts. Economics is unique among the disciplines in social studies for the number of concepts that are central to an understanding of the field. All of the 15 indicators in the economic strand of the C3 framework mention concepts that students need to learn about. Some of those indicator, indicators are exclusively conceptual. In fact, most of them are. And they are really helping to lay a foundation for thinking within the field. This chart on the screen lists 43 concepts that appear in the 15 economics indicators. Again, you'll see scarcity in the upper left-hand corner, but look at the other concepts that are here. Concepts such as trade, and productivity, corporations, inflation and deflation, economic interdependence. Each of these concepts appears by name at least once in at least one of the 15 indicators. And so it's very important as social studies teachers that we think about these concepts in the unique ways that economists think about them and plan regular opportunities for students to encounter these concepts, practice with them so that they can learn how econ what economists mean when they use the terms, terms like wages and credits, labor unions and economic indicators. While concepts are the main focus of the economic strand in the C3, there are also three indicators in the C3 framework in the economic strand that describe tools in the discipline, specifically focusing on making choices and decisions. And remember, we talked about how effective decision making is really at the core of economics as it's represented in the civic strand of the C3 framework. On this slide are the indicators uh, in summaries of the indicators um, with regard to the type of literacy that each one of these indicators are. And what you can see here is that while most of the indicators are conceptual in focus, three are focused on tools. For all three of these tool-based indicators, the tool or the thing that students would do does it really appear until high school? Uh, students are beginning to practice with that skill, but these are things that really make their appearance in high school. We'll talk about each one of these. Um, it's indicator two, indicator 10, and indicator 11. Indicator two, as you can see, is focused on marginal, using marginal benefits and costs. Indicator 10 is focused on using data current data, and indicator 11 is focused on using economic indicators. So let's take a look at these in more depth. As you can see, indicator 9 use marginal benefits and marginal cost to construct an argument for or against an approach or a solution to an economic issue. Now this is an expectation um, at the high school level, but in order to get students to the point where they're successful at this, we have to build them up across the earlier grades. Something else useful to notice about this is that the expectation is students are using this unique way of thinking in the discipline of economics in really what is functionally an inquiry. Note here that students would be expected to use marginal benefits and marginal cost to do what? construct an argument, and arguments are the outcome of an inquiry. And those arguments would be for or against an approach or solution to an economic issue. So the idea is that students learn that we have economic issues, that you can have sides, multiple sides, and it's not an either or, so there's a middle ground. And that students need to be able to work their way through or argue their way through these economic issues using marginal benefits and marginal costs. The second indicator is focused on using current data, and again, note that it's to focus on doing something. In this instance, it's to explain the influence of something, so it's not exactly the same as the previous one that's argumentation, this one's explain. And then the third uh, tools-based indicator is focused on using economic indicators to kind of think forward 
about what the state of the economy might be in the future. So let's look in a little bit more depth at each one of these. The first of the tools that economists can use that are highlighted in the economic strand of the C3 framework is the second indicator. And the indicator calls on students, as I said earlier, to use information about benefits and costs when thinking about economic problems. You can see how it builds up from uh, the K2 grade band all the way to the 912 grade band. The indicator indi uh, introduces the concept of benefits and costs in early grades when students should at least be able to identify benefits and costs when making personal decisions. This skill increases in sophistication in upper elementary grades when students should be able to identify the influence of positive and negative incentives when making those decisions. In middle school, students should begin to identify alternative approaches to solutions. And finally, by high school, the concept, the full concept is introduced as marginal benefits and marginal costs. And again, this is focused on solving economic problems. The second tool-based indicator in the economic strand of Dimension 2 in the C3 framework is the tenth indicator. Again, you see the, grade, uh, the uh, indicator pathway with the different grade bands. This indicator builds across the grade bands towards students being able to use data to explain the influence of changes in spending, production, and money supply on various economic conditions. While the previous indicator, indicator 2, this tool-based, focused on personal finance, this indicator focuses on how economists work with information. In the earliest grades, the indicator simply expects students to understand why people save. Of course, that's not a simple thing to understand. Saving can enable future spending, helps protect us against financial emergencies, and can be an investment. In upper elementary, the concept of interest rates is introduced, and then borrowing and investing is introduced in middle grades. With these foundations in place, Students in high school are eventually expected to use data to explain the influence of changes in spending, production, and money supply. Again, new concepts for students to learn. The third tool or way of thinking in the, in the economic strain of Dimension 2 of the C3 framework is the 11th indicator. This indicator is similar to the previous in that it focuses on how economists use information to solve problems. Here, students are expected to use economic indicators to analyze the economy. Uh, the first indicator is in grades 3-5, so there's nothing in K2. And in 3-5, students are expected to work with the concept as concepts of inflation, deflation, and unemployment. In middle school, students begin to use data to evaluate a number of things related to employment, inflation, production, income, and economic growth. And then in high school, students use economic data to analyze the state of the economy, both now in the current uh, condition and in the future. In summary, economic literacies focus primarily on concepts. There are over 40 specific concepts mentioned in the 15 indicators. Three economic ways of thinking describe how students can use economic data in their personal financial life and when analyzing economic issues and trends. Now that you've watched this video, please complete the assessment accompanying the video. Make sure to look over the background readings. They'll help. Um, I've also included our pause, reflect, and apply activity that will give you an opportunity to think about the ways you're using economics, disciplinary literacies in your teaching and to move that forward. Next up, we'll examine the discipline of geography, looking at the unique strategies and skills that are used in this field and how we might support students to learn more about how to do that themselves. Thanks.